There's been a lot of discussion about cheating in speedrunning recently. I did some research and was really surprised by not only how easy it is, but by the number of people who have been caught. I'd like to give a giant thanks to everyone who has helped expose these faked runs. All resources referenced in this video will be linked in the description, and I highly suggest you go check them out for yourselves if you want more detailed explanations of what I'm about to go over. Now without further ado, here are 10 speedrunners who were caught cheating. Todd Rogers is the first ever paid pro gamer, joining the US national video game team in 1986. He's known for holding many video game records, including the high score for Centipede. His most controversial record is a time of 5.51 in Dragster, a game for the Atari 2600, which he set all the way back in 1982 and has yet to be tied to this day. This time was verified by a referee. There is no video of this record. This time was especially impressive because the developer's simulated fastest time was a 5.54 and and the fastest tool assisted speedrun is only a 5.57. Todd claims he achieved this time by shifting into second gear before the race even started, which doesn't seem to be possible. Omnigamer decided to look into the validity of this run. He looked through each line of code in the game, and from this he created a spreadsheet which shows all possible times you can get. He found that there is no way you could possibly get a 5.51 during normal play. I reached out to Todd and he told me Omnigamer was using incorrect numbers but didn't elaborate further. When I asked if he'd be willing to do an interview, he stopped responding. In an interview with Kotaku, he wrote, If he's basing his spreadsheets and shifting on one particular pattern, then that's pretty ignorant and closed-minded because you're not factoring in the human element of how the game would respond. A formal dispute has now been filed on the Twin Galaxies website and it's believed by many this time is not legitimate. If you watch this clip of Todd playing Dragster recently, he doesn't seem like the most honest guy. That was a, that was a, that was a bad game. Right now the camera's showing and I'm, I'm doing miserable. It's just, it's really strange because like, when people do interviews or media, it's like, a, I can't get below 584% or 581% for strange reasons. You know what, this stick is really sensitive too here. I'm, I'm pressing to the left and it's not shifting. But this is the smoking gun in my opinion. Todd made this post on an Atari message board claiming to have gotten a 5.54, which isn't possible. I imported the photo into Photoshop to take a closer look. You can see this entire picture has this clear checkerboard pattern. Here's a close up. Now let's take a look at the numbers. You can see the checkerboard pattern on all sides of the 5.54, but the 5.54 itself looks completely different than the rest of the photo. Looking at the 4, you can see the same exact thing. And just to be 100% certain, I took a look at the numbers for player 2 at the bottom of the screen, and sure enough, you can see the checkerboard pattern is present. I can say with certainty that Todd doctored this photo to claim he'd gotten a 5.54, and if he's willing to doctor evidence, he'd be willing to lie about getting a 5.51. Earlier this year, Retro made a really good video about cheating, and I suggest you go check it out. During this video, he talks about Aki Khan and White Eris, who were both caught splicing 16-star runs. They were both caught because of edits you could find in the audio, but these are not the runs I want to talk about. Retro's video got hundreds of thousands of views, so this topic was fresh on a lot of people's minds. Shortly after Retro made this video, Cheese got his 139 and 120 star, and someone by the name of Holy Moly left this comment on his video. Yeah, baby, you can play like Tass. Very impressive. Back in 2004, I held the 16 star world record for several years. Holy moly. A prominent Mario runner, Gothic Logic, saw this comment and decided to do some digging. He found the run he was looking for, and when he analyzed the audio in Audacity using the spectrogram display, he found the exact same blatant splices in the audio file that White Eris and AkiKon had been exposed for years ago. This one cracks me up because he had gotten away with this for nearly 12 years. No one would have ever questioned him if he had just shut up, but no, he had to go around and randomly brag about his fake time on someone else's video. The videos are still up, but now everyone knows this run is fake. There was a time when TSA was one of the most respected Zelda speedrunners. I found runs of his dating all the way back to 2004 when almost no one had any idea what speedrunning was, but in 2011 it was exposed that many of his speedruns were not in fact single segment runs like he had said, but instead segments spliced together. I was able to find one of these runs, his Ocarina of Time Any% percent run in 5 hours and 4 minutes. When you pause in this game, it will remember which screen you looked at last, so when you pause again later, you'll be looking at the same screen. But if you reset your game to attempt a segment over and over, the pause menu will no longer line up with where you paused last. This is what exposed TSA's runs as splices, and not the single segment runs they claim to be. There were also some pretty clear cuts that anyone could notice just by watching the run. TSA responded to the accusations on the SDA forums, which I'll now read a portion of. I did not cheat at speedrunning or fake runs ever. 
I had to listen to a bunch of Zelda speedrunners explain how my item drops and other inconsistencies prove I used what they called splicing and saving quit to make what amounts to a segmented run masking as a single segment. This is not true, and I'm going to give you the full explanation of why this is so. As I explained to Radix 6 plus years ago, Back then, I did not have a good PC or capture card. I could not capture beyond a certain time limit. Too many of my runs would end because of a capture issue, and I was fed up. Yes, I could have used VHS or DVD, but I was convinced by SDA people back then that capture cards were the way to go. So just throw an SDA under the bus for no reason. Before I ever submitted to SDA, I submitted all my runs to VHS and CAM on Twin Galaxies. No way I could have cheated with the setup they required. It was all in one capture, on tape, with CAM footage to prove I played the game. My capture problems led me to ask Radix about a solution, which was allowed by him. It was to allow me to capture my runs in chunks. However, I would do multiple runs at a time. And this is where it gets good. And despite my best efforts, I now know segments from different attempts made it into the submission files to Radix. So somehow, even though he was trying his hardest, different segments just got mixed up and submitted as one run on accident. You can easily say that this means I picked the best segments and constructed better runs. And that is exactly what I'm saying. Ultimately, his runs were removed and he quit speedrunning completely. In 2014, a runner named Gorongai was caught faking a 100% run of Majora's Mask. This really surprised me not because he would try to cheat, but because of how terrible of an attempt this was. All he did was make up fake splits and then start his stream right near the end of the run. Another runner named Thiefbug called him out pretty much immediately, and Gorongai admitted it was true. He wrote a pasteman in response in which he really never apologized and made a bunch of excuses for what he had done. This prompted a lot of criticism from the wider speedrunning community. He still streams consistently, and the good news is he hasn't cheated again, to my knowledge, and after what he went through, I doubt he ever will. Frigate Secret Agent is possibly the most frustrating run in GoldenEye. There are four objectives you must complete, with objective A being rescue hostages. Freeing the hostages isn't enough, they need to be freed and escape off the boat. The issue with this is hostages run around the boat randomly and almost never escape fast enough for a world record run with all objectives completed. At the beginning of 2011, the untied record for the run was 1 minute 1 second until a runner named Henning posted a time of one minute flat. The issue with this run, right here, as the level goes to fade out, Bond puts away the Phantom, but when entering the boat unarmed, he will always put away the PP7. This was evidence of a spliced end screen, and after examining more of his runs, it turned out he had cheated repeatedly for years. This led to Henning being permanently banned from the Elite and having all his times removed. Staying on the topic of Goldeneye, I spoke with another dirty cheater, our White Goose. Out of all the runners I reached out to, he was the only one willing to do an interview, so I thank you for your openness. Here's what he had to say about his faked runs. Yeah, so I, I, I made them all at once, and it was like November 2007. Two on Frigate 00. So there was first a 110, and then once I had it faked, I was like, oh, let's go all the way, and let's go 107 untied world record. There was uh, a 101 secret agent, uh, so it was two untieds, and then Frigate Agent 23 uh, which is like a multi-tied record. And the thing with Frigate is like it's it's the level to fake because a completed run looks the same as a failed run, right? You, you get to the end of the... You hop in the boat, you hope the hostages escaped as you were exiting the boat, and you just splice on the, the cutscene and uh, watch it fade out, yeah. What I could have done is Game Sharked it, uh, waited at the boat, jumped in at 107 with all objectives complete, and now I have like a viable 107 end screen that I can use to edit and whatnot. I mean, this is 10 years ago. The editing isn't as, as good either. I, I was I was too lazy. So I just like found a, the number. I found the number seven on the end screen somewhere else. And I just like shopped it over the last digit, you know. And then I just mimicked the, uh, you know, because the thing with Golden that, that makes it a little bit easier is that it'll always say best time. It'll say the time of the run, time, and then best time. So if I did get a legit 107 fail, I could just copy-paste that portion of the end screen onto the best time part and make it look legit, right? So that's all I did, and I did that for all... That, that, was, that was my standard um, practice for all of them. It was like the end screen obviously was static, right? So nowadays people do a lot of like movement on the end screen, uh, not necessarily to prove it's not fake, but that's kind of where it stemmed from to like, it was kind of like a show of like, oh, look, I can move my cursor on the end screen. It's clearly not a shopped end screen. But at the time, the moderators and admin were the guys, I always talk about these guys, Endgamer and Commissor, who like really didn't care about Golden. I didn't care about the rankings. They just wanted to like, they were kind of hoping the site was going to die and they would just kind of have it a hangout to watch NFL and play poker and that kind of stuff. 
And that's actually part of the reason why I made the fakes because I wanted to like motivate people to like take action and like kind of make rules and stuff because they weren't going to do that any other way. So I had to kind of play devil's advocate and take drastic action eventually after like, you know, weeks of a firestorm in the forums. Um, I think they made a poll that was like, Oh, what should we do with goose? Should we ban him? I think my times page was frozen for like a month or two. And I kind of took two or three months off of gold night. And then when I came back uh, in late January or so, I posted like a legit untied record and I wouldn't say all was forgiven, but we moved on from there. Yeah. Chibi is best known for his couch commentary at SGDQ 2014, but he also has a decent sized following of his own on Twitch. During 2015, he started speedrunning Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Here, you can do a frame perfect jump to make it onto this ledge, which saves a significant amount of time. To perform the skip with a normal jump, you need to enter the fight at the exact peak of Mario's jump. If you're off by one frame, this will not work. If you watch Chibi's first jump, you can see he loses a little bit of height before entering the fight. That means there's no way he could possibly get the skip at this point. But Chibi had used an action replay to give his jump extra height, so even with the lost height, he was still able to make it onto the ledge. An expert in the game, Tass Maleo, was watching in chat and knew something wasn't right, so he confronted Chibi, and he admitted to what he had done. Chibi later responded to this, and you can tell he's learned his lesson. I don't think Chibi's a bad guy, and this was just an honest mistake. Approximately one year ago, a user named Flying posted a San Andreas run with a time of 4 hours, 1 minute, and 13 seconds. Someone named KZ made a video showing how he used both splices and scripts during his run. If you guys want to watch his video, it will be in the description. While it's pretty easy to splice any game, scripts are generally only used for PC games. What they allow you to do is run exact inputs so you can get perfect gameplay. This is similar to how people create tool-assisted speedruns, except they're mixed in with normal gameplay to make it look like a legitimate run. The most obvious evidence of scripts is during this section. Watch how quickly and perfectly he lines up his first few targets. It doesn't look like a human being moving a mouse at all. But if you have any doubts, look at the shots he fires a few seconds later when he turns the script off. Much more fluid, you can tell these shots were made by a human. And here you can see an obvious place. First, notice the time in the top right is 1018 as he goes to save. He clicks save, and then there are three frames where the game is fading back in. Here's one, here's two, here's three. Notice the direction he's facing, and that the clock is still at 1018. Now we go to the very next frame and it's not even close the splice is clear as day i never found an official response from him and he sends disabled ratings and comments on his video which is always a sign that someone is hiding something just a week ago it was discovered that XOSDA's 2012 speedrun of Super Meat Boy in 1839 was spliced. This surprised many because this run stood for over a year right around when speedrunning was really taking off, so it was this run that inspired many of those who run Super Meat Boy today. Between level transitions, the bandage girl icon will appear in the lower left hand side of the screen. Her arm animation runs on consistent 40 frame cycles. She holds her arms up for 20 frames and then down for 20 frames. Now the number of frames she stays on screen varies, for example, entering a level you may only see her hold her hands down for 15 frames. That means the next time you see her, she'll hold her hands down for only 5 frames before putting her hands up again. When the moderators discovered this, they made these tables analyzing many high profile runs. This table shows data from the current top 5 runs. You can see all the values add up to 20 up and 20 down. Now if we look at EXO's run, you'll see it isn't close at all and clear evidence of tampering. Now let me read you his response. Back when I was running Super Meat Boy, my goal was to get published on SDA, which required footage that wasn't just the stream recording. However, I ran into a lot of trouble recording that footage with Fraps. The main issue was that the game and the recording would freeze at random intervals for up to 10 seconds after some minutes due to the awful PC I had at the time. This led to me not being able to record full runs of the game I ended up working on almost every day for about a year in total. Restarting the recording mid-run wasn't an option, as that led to the game stopping as well, usually for even longer periods of time. After countless runs being ruined by these random freezes, I simply had enough and ended up stopping the game and fraps after every chapter just to be able to record a full run. As I was reading this, I noticed this was extremely similar to the excuse that TSA made years earlier, so I guess great minds think alike. As soon as I made a mistake that I felt was reset worthy, I stopped the recording and deleted the save game to start from the beginning. This is of course the critical part where you either believe me or you don't, and I don't. After this discovery, obviously Exo's run was removed, and all runs must now display the bandage girl icon in the corner of the screen. Alright, now with everything I've learned, I'm going to attempt something which may make some people mad. I'm going to make my own spliced run and see if I can get it verified on speedrun.com. I'm going to make a fake Ocarina of Time any percent run because it's short and easy. 
I've split the run up into different segments between each loading zone. I'm going to make sure there are no pause screen irregularities like with TSA's run. I've also kept careful track of my heart and rupee counts to make sure they stay consistent between segments. Okay, now I've recorded each segment I needed. This run's pretty bad for a spliced run in 1804. I just slapped this together quickly, but it's still better than anyone should be able to get for their first run. So I'm hoping this sets off a lot of red flags on a new account. I made one big mistake and that is my left channel of audio went out during the recording of my final segment so I condensed both audio channels down to one. If anything gets me caught it'll probably be this mistake but I think I can still slip through. I've made sure each segment is spliced frame perfectly so there should be no way to tell the run is fake from the video alone. Now I'm going to export the audio into Audacity, use the noise removal function to remove all the background hum. Now I'm going to re-import the audio and overlay my own uninterrupted mains hum to cover up any evidence of splicing in the audio. Here's an example of a splice with no other editing, and here's what it looks like after using the noise removal and overlaying my own background hum. Now I'm going to export this whole clip and submit it to speedrun.com and see what happens. I was pleasantly surprised when I woke up this morning to see my run had been rejected for being too sketchy. I'm not really sure what that means, but they're not wrong, it is fake. I'd made the assumption they wouldn't scrutinize this run too thoroughly, but clearly I was wrong. So big props to the Ocarina of Time moderating team and specifically Valiant Link for calling me out. At this point I feel kind of bad attempting this again since I already got shut down. But I'll throw one more run together and see what happens. Alright, I made another run in 1837, this time without any audio issues. And the frame rate stayed consistent throughout the run. And it did get verified on the leaderboard, so there you go, I am now a verified cheater. Even though I got shut down the first time, I do think my second run should be impossible to detect as a splice. And it really wasn't that hard, which makes me think with so many people who have already been caught, there are probably many more who haven't.